Are you wanting some powerful integrations or some really nice looking dashboards for your Home Assistant instance? Well then the Home Assistant Community Store or Hacks is exactly what you're looking for. Except people who are new to Home Assistant might find it a little bit tricky to install it the first time round. So today I'm gonna to show you how to do that really, really easily. Hello and welcome, my name is Connor from Luxia Smart Homes and today I'm going to tell you how to install hacks. I'm going to walk you through step by step on how to do it and this is a method I've been using since the start of my Home Assistant journey many many years ago and it still works today despite all of the different updates that have happened throughout the years. So unlike other outdated methods this has been extremely reliable for me. Now, before we begin, there are a couple of things I would advise you do. It'll just help speed up the process later on. Now, first one is kind of obvious. You're going to need Home Assistant set up and running. So make sure you've got that. You'll also need to go ahead and download the SSH and Web Terminal add-on, which I will walk you through step-by-step step in a moment on how to do that. Uh, don't forget to enable the advanced mode under your user profile within Home Assistant. And finally, you should go ahead and create a GitHub account if you don't already have one, because we will be using this to actually access hacks and it will need to be authorized via GitHub. Let's start by going to settings, add-ons, and then looking for the advanced SSH and web terminal add-on. And we're gonna go ahead and install this. Once this is installed, you're going to head over to the configuration tab and you're going to set a username and password. This is a really important step that cannot be skipped because if you try to start the add-on without this information, it will fail to start. So make sure you've set a username and password, you've saved that, and then you can go ahead and start the add-on. Whenever you're starting an add-on, I would suggest that you jump into the logs to make sure that everything is booting up correctly and that there are no warnings or errors. But if you set that username and password, it should be booting up just fine. Now, once the add-on is up and running, you can access it either via the sidebar, if you've put it into the sidebar, or you can just open it directly from the add-on page. Now, once you're inside, you'll be greeted with a nice terminal window, and now you can run terminal commands directly from the user interface. Now, all we're going to do is run one simple command, which I'm typing in now, and you'll also see it on screen, and it will also be in the description for you to simply copy and paste. Now, this command will just go ahead and uh, install hacks for you. It'll do everything automatically. Uh, it's super quick, and it'll only take a couple of seconds. If you've typed everything in correctly, you should see some text scrolling across the screen like this. And this is just the script running and downloading all of the dependencies and placing everything into your Home Assistant configuration directory. And it should only take a few seconds. And you'll know it's done because at the bottom it will say that it is complete. You'll also see a little bit of info here telling you to restart your Home Assistant instance. And you will have to do this. You cannot skip this step. You need to perform a restart so that everything is running correctly. So we're going to go over to our settings and restart Home Assistant from there. Now you could actually just run HA core restart from the terminal and that would also perform a restart. But for some reason, I decided to take the long way around when recording this video. Once your Home Assistant instance has restarted and everything is back up and running, we can go to our settings, devices and services, and then we can add a new integration. Now, all we're going to do is search for hacks and it should pop up. So you're going to click on that and go ahead and install it. You'll first be greeted with a little pop-up with some checkboxes, just basically confirming your understanding of hacks and how it works and what it does. So you can just check all of these and then proceed to the next step. After you've checked all those boxes and proceeded, you should be greeted with another window asking you to authorize with GitHub. To do this, we're just gonna simply click on the link within the pop-up and this will take us to the GitHub login page where we're going to log in with the account that you just created or uh, account that you already have. Now, once you've logged in, it's going to ask you for a device activation code, and this is inside the pop-up window back in Home Assistant. So let's jump back over to Home Assistant. Let's quickly copy and paste that activation code and then go back to GitHub 
and paste it into the box. Now, once you've authorized that, you should be able to access hacks. Everything should be set up correctly within Home Assistant. So if we jump back to Home Assistant, we should see it was successfully integrated and we can now close this pop-up and we should be able to see hacks in the sidebar now. Now, if you can't see it, just refresh your web page. And if that fails, go into your browser settings and clear your cache, then come back to Home Assistant and do another refresh. You may also have to do a restart of Home Assistant or even a reboot under the advanced menu to make it appear within the sidebar. But if you follow all of those steps, it should hopefully appear in your sidebar. As you can see, we can jump into hacks and access the hundreds of community created integrations and themes and other elements. Now you've got popular things like Mushroom, which is for your dashboard, really nice looking dashboard elements. And to give you an example of an integration, I'm gonna download the adaptive lighting integration. Now for dashboard elements, like your Lovelace stuff, all you need to do is usually refresh your web page for that to take effect. But with integrations, it's slightly different. You're going to need to do a restart. So now we've installed the adaptive lighting integration. You can see that there is a repair warning telling me that I need to restart in order for this integration to work. So we're gonna go ahead and do a restart of Home Assistant. So now we've restarted, the repair warning has disappeared and we can head over to our devices and services add an integration, and if we look for the adaptive lighting integration, it is now available to set up. So whenever you're adding integrations through hacks, just remember that you're going to have to restart your instance in order for them to appear within the integrations page. Now, one thing to note is that if you're running a Home Assistant container instead of OS or supervised, then the process is slightly different. There are some other commands that you will need to run within the terminal. If you like a video on this as well, then do let me know in the comments. So there we have it. You have successfully set up and installed the Home Assistant Community Store, giving you access to hundreds of different integrations and themes for your Home Assistant instance. Now, if you enjoyed today's video and you found it helpful, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our latest content. And hopefully I will see you in the next video.